All right, what I'm doing is I'm setting up a sign. I'm going to build a sign, and I've got some material from a, a company, Duets. And what Duets have come up with is a new lay board that you can laser. So it's a plastic board material that you can laser. And I'm trying it for the first time with a new 7-watt laser from uh, CNC Sharp. So what I'm going to do is I've gone up here at the top right-hand side. I've selected my engraved button. Close this. And I've selected again. Working on a big screen today. It's the one I teach with, so it's a little tough to do one-on-one. -on -one, but uh, I think you can see it. I come over here to where the engrave button is. I'm going to use that for a laser. Okay, so I am going to edit where the tool is. I got a 0 0.01 tip or a 0 0.02 tip. I'm going to edit it, and I'm going to come over here and come down to right here where it says spindle RPM to change. The spindle RPM, obviously we have a laser on there, so we don't want the spindle to go around it would destroy the laser. So what they use that setting for is the intensity of the laser. I usually have it set anywhere from 450 to 650. I'm going to change it right now to 1000, which is the maximum output. Because uh, we're going to try to vaporize this plastic and leave the... It's a red plastic, a matte finish, so the laser is supposed to basically burn it up, if you will, vaporize it, and then you suck it out with your air collection, dust collection system. I'm going to put my feed rate down here at 60, and I'm going to say OK. Now I can blow it down on the touch pendant, and I'm going to, instead of using a hatch, I'm going to use a fill, and then I'm going to come down here and say calculate. Now, we're going to test it in the lab. Uh, I've got to export this file and if you notice what I've got it on is CNC Piranha Laser dot tap file. Before I do that I'm going to close this file and I have, I'm going to come up here and make sure I've got these settings correct. You can see them. Set material. Because for the laser I don't want the clearance. I don't want it to go above 0.01 the plunge at 0 0.01 and the home at 0 0.01 so that's at 0 0.02 so I'm going to backspace it and make that one as well so those material settings are okay now I have to recalculate that quick engrave come down here and calculate it now I'm going to save this and I have it make sure it's at the CNC Prana laser and then I save it And I'm going to save it on my flash drive. And I'm going to call it elevator sign. I'm doing this for a church. Obviously, I'm not charging for it. Uh, if you want to charge, you can, but I do a lot of free work for churches. Save it. And that's it. Now, um, we close this. If you want to see what it's going to look like, you can do that. You preview it just like you normally would. You hit the preview button. But you come up here and you change this color to black. Okay? So that it, it previews it in black. And you come down here and say preview visible sign. So when you preview it, that's what it should look like if it vaporizes the top coat. In this case, our top coat is red. So I can actually change that to... If, yeah, right there, the red plastic. Can you see that? Red plastic. So that's the way it should look. Do not open, and it goes on a door until the red light is on. So, and if you don't know where those color changes are, right up here in the top, see where it says preview tools? And the top thing is the color of the material you preview. And I chose red plastic because that's what it is. And the under color is black so I'll laser this and see if I burn up the piece instead of making it nice so we'll see this is the first one so it's kind of an experiment 
All right, we're going to go back to the wood shop. And if you look, you can see the actual name of the ride. I'll show you it again later. What I'm using here is Gorilla double-sided tape to stick it down because there's no way to really clamp it. The thickness of this is only point... Oh, I forget what it is. Point one, it's one sixteenth. You can divide it out. It's thin. And the coating on it is so thin that it made it really hard to try to carve it. This is a board I... I burned it just on the board to see how it was, and it's quite hot, so you can see how it just burned up the board. So it's going to vaporize some of the plastic. Uh, the problem that we're having with that board, we're going to load the program, see it's elevator tap, and that's the details on the program. Um, it's in the center of the board, and you can see that. And it also gives you a warning that there's a laser file there. And I've mounted it to the centers as best I can. What I did is I actually burned it. You saw it briefly there. I burned a square on the table to set that in. And it still turns out it's off just a little bit. Um, caution you to wear your safety glasses and wear your laser glasses. The laser glasses are red and help deflect it. Uh, the big key is just don't look at it. Um, you know, we're looking at it here, but we're not getting down even with the board because then you actually get some of that laser light bouncing in your direction. That opaque shield that's there helps to block that laser light. So we've got the laser burning that, and because of the shield is so large you can't see it. You can see it slipping out there. Uh, if you look at the side of the board you can see this board is actually white. So what you're seeing there is the charring of the top layer and it's like charcoal basically when it vaporizes it. So we're going to use the liquid later to actually clean that off. Um, so you can see the word da but you see some of the smoke and the overburn. Um, keep in mind, underneath is white, and you'll see that. The problem, of course, is I've got it a little too hot. And what's happening is the white plastic is actually melting and taking in some of that black lettering. But this is a sign where they didn't have one, and um, it turns out fairly decent. Good enough that I'll use it. Uh, the company donated some samples, and I tried to adjust the next part of this video will actually look at changing some of that, uh, the settings. How do I change those settings and uh, burn it again? Uh, the di problem is that uh, this plastic is designed for laser, using the laser on. The next plastic isn't, but it still works pretty good, um, as you'll see. If you have any questions, you can do that in the comment section. Uh, then I can answer any specific questions you might have. What I'm trying to cover in, in this section is it gives you the ability to do some of this stuff in case you haven't done it before. Um, I've got, uh, I think what I did is lowered it a little bit because it was a little too close to the setting. And I've got the air on. You want to have uh, your dust collection system powered because of the... Uh, when you burn plastic, sometimes you get toxic chemicals that come off of that. So make sure that if you're burning stuff, you've got either a, a smoke eater or you're blowing it outside. There's a window behind here, and I opened it up and uh, put a fan in the window to help pull out any excess as well and give fresh air to the room. So don't do this in a closed environment. It's not uh, good for you. Uh, you know, the secondhand smoke, if you will, but it, in some cases, if it's burning this type of material, it's a chemical smoke that you don't want to have. So keep that in mind. And we also have, um, there's a difference between this laser, the way it cuts, and the way you no know, expensive ones cut. And it's not the laser itself. It has to do with the Vetrix program. Vetrix does this laser movement just like it would be using a carving bit and most lasers don't do that they do it most lasers turn on and off and move like a printer would and if you're doing using a printer when it prints it doesn't move all over the page it prints line by line and most lasers burn that way uh, so if Vetrix modifies it, you'll have a lot better speed control over this. But so far, they haven't done that. Uh, so one of the things that limit the quality of the laser is the program that's driving it. And what happens is, if you look at the small letters like the E and the G and the T, 
you'll see that they don't get up to speed in the eye. So if they don't get up to speed, they actually burn, they slow down and let it burn longer. So you'll see those letters are actually darker. And one of the tricks to that is figuring out how to adjust the intensity and the speed combination so that when it's moving on the long letters, you get the same effect. Now you can see I wiped it off there and that's with a dry rag. Uh, later on I'll wipe it off with a wet rag and you'll see that it's, it's better but it's not perfect. I actually like the engraved ones better than this but uh, this works pretty good and it was laser plastic in our first attempt so it's it worked out well. That's the company this, it's, you can buy the plastic from. Uh, you can freeze frame this and just copy that down. There's a phone number and a uh, they'll mail you a brochure on the plastic. Uh, it worked all right. You can see there part of the letters where the carbon is actually embedded into that white plastic. So, but it, it turned out pretty good. And I used that sign. I just double used this new or clean double sticky tape and stuck it to the door. So, and it's working. People are reading the signs because the arrow points up to the light. And I, I made, there were two things wrong at this elevator. One was that didn't, it had a light that you couldn't open the door until the light was on or it, it messed up the elevator lock in place. So, but there were no signage for that. So I added that sign and the arrow says, it doesn't say there, but the rest of the arrows I made, it said, look at the light. This is my second attempt at doing a, a laser sign on plastic. The sign's a little different than the other one, but what I've changed is, you go to quick engrave tools, Okay, and then you select your tip size, which is 0.02. The depth is 0 0.01. And your fill, which will darken all the letters inside the square. And I'm going to an offset, and that's my offset distance. So that, my laser actually cuts at about 0 0.01. So my step over, it should shouldn't overlap and it should burn fairly well um, then you click on edit here when you click on edit up here this box comes up and if you look at this box that all this stuff you don't have to worry about but you come down here where it says spindle speed and that is the intensity of your laser I'm changing it ahead of a thousand on the last attempt I'm lowering it down to 650 and I'm increasing my feed rate. That way I can increase or decrease my feed rate a little bit. Uh, the feed rate really doesn't matter that much because, except on these long runs like this. Because when you're doing letters, it doesn't really get time to run up the speed before it has to stop. So with the laser, sometimes uh, that doesn't matter when you're doing letters. So we're gonna try that. I'm gonna save it over here as a piranha laser. And then, uh, We'll go to the shop and see if it burns up pretty good. This is the second attempt to cut this material. My CNC is the process of coming up. Um, if you look at, these are duets by Gemini. This is the back side. I put two pieces of Gorilla Tape, one there and one there. If you look at the other side, it's yellow. And it's got uh, a thin film on it right now. I'll peel that off. It's just clear to protect the surface. And I'm going to stick this down inside this square. If you look, this is my spoil board. Sorry about that. See my spoil board? There's a line there and there. I'm going to line this up, turn it over, obviously, and stick it down to that line. And this is centered left, right, up, and down on that piece. Okay? And then I will laser it. I'm going to start at a low level 300 and then go to, if it doesn't burn it properly, I'll go to 450. If it doesn't do it, I can go all the way up to 1000. So we'll see how it does. This is black underneath the yellow and it'll absorb better than that white did. So if I get it too hot, it'll burn. The levers are starting to appear and we will use 30% of power at 75 inches per minute. So I reduced it down so that hopefully it won't burn through. You can see some charcoal in the local letters. I'm going to get a rag and wipe that off and make sure that happens. Okay, it's done. 
use a damp cloth and wipe some of it off. I need some Windex and I don't have any here. So that's what I get next. I'm cleaning it up. Uh, it's good enough. It's good. Like I said before, if I had to do over, I would change my line spacing. As you can see right in here, those are 0.015 apart. I think I dropped that uh, to 0.01 and that would give me, uh, I think if I can focus it, that would get rid of that little deviation in the plane. So I think it looks pretty good. It gives me enough highlight that I can uh, call it good, I think. I could run it again, but I think it would work and melt the plastic. Another project done. Did you help it?